Hi, my name is Janet Fagan. Welcome to my art studio here at home. We are going to be using materials that are pretty easy to get, if not in your own pantry and refrigerator, than from the grocery store. Um, and I'm going to show you a couple of demos so that you'll have an idea where we're headed. But when you see these demos, I don't want you to think that your piece is going to look exactly like this because the idea is we are going to experiment and play. So we have no idea what our pieces are going to look like. These are just examples of what um, they could look like. So I want you to just notice any shapes that you see. Take a look at the different colors. I'll show you one more. So you might notice that both of these pieces are pretty limited in their color use. And that's because we are creating the colors that we're using from what we have on hand in our kitchens. So, <laughs> I happen to love beets, and part of the reason that I love beets is because they are such a beautiful color. And when you buy canned beets, you have all of this wonderful liquid, and beet juice is actually what's making part of the pinks in this piece, okay? The other colors that you see are coming from frozen blackberry juice and pomegranate juice. <laughs> so the way that we're getting these wonderful colors onto our papers is with spray bottles. So if you happen to have a, a Windex bottle that you don't mind emptying out for a little while, I just dumped my Windex in another container. It's in the other room. I'll fill it back up when I'm done with this project. But in the meantime, it's got beet juice in here. So swish it out really good, get all the soapy Windex out of there, and then put your beet juice in here. If you have a spray bottle that you might use for gardening, these work too. These are great. I happen to have a lot of uh, little spray bottles that I just purchased off of Amazon. If you ever want to do this project down the road and go that route, that's really an easy um, thing to find on Amazon. So you'll notice I have these labeled. This is the beet juice one. These are the blackberries, um, the pomegranate juice, and then I also have another art supply that's easy to get off the internet or if you have a, an art supply store in town you like to go to. This is basically just Sumi ink. It comes in a container that looks like this, but India ink works just as well. So these are our, our spray bottle options. I'm just going to move these off to the side and show you the other materials that you're going to need. A pair of scissors, paper towels, Q-tips, maybe three or four. And then if you have, as far as paper to work on, you're going to need some to cut up and then some to work on. So you can just use 8.5 by 11 copy paper. Just pull some um, out of your printer. If you have a printer, that will work fine. If you happen to have a sketchbook with a little bit heavier weight paper, that's nice too. Um, that's what this is. This is just sketchbook paper. If you have file folders, manila, manila folders, those will work. Index cards, anything like that would be great. So let's take a pause here so you can go and gather your materials and I'll meet you right back here and we'll get started. So now that we're back, um, our first step is going to be to cut out some shapes. We're going to use these shapes to create a resist to make a pattern in our composition. So as you can see, I've already cut a few shapes out to get started. I also went outside and um, took a couple of leaves off a of rhododendron because I thought these might make a nice resist too. And I'm also going to take a moment just to cut one more shape that I'm particularly fond of. I really like pear shapes, so I'm going to cut a few pear shapes out. So I'm just folding my paper once and then twice so that I can get multiple shapes. And then I'm just going to jump in and these shapes don't have to be perfect so I'm not worrying about perfection. I'm just going to have fun moving my scissors around and turning the paper as I go till I get something 
This sort of maybe kind of looks like a pear. That's great. That's good. And I'm going to go with it. So now we have a nice selection of shapes because what's fun is to work on several pieces. So this project can move right along and you can create um, several in a short amount of time. So we're going to jump right in. I'm going to grab a piece of paper. You can turn it any way you like, horizontal or um, vertical. I'm going to start vertically with this one. And I'm going to start with a, a large pear shape. And which, I'm just going to grab this first bottle, which is the beet juice. So I'm going to put my, my shape on my paper. Just hold it down lightly with my fingers. Give the bottle a little shake. And then a spritz. I'm going to move the shape a little bit. Spritz again. Ooh, this is fun. One more time. Creating kind of a, a rhythm with repetition. Oh, once more just for kicks. All right. Ooh, I love this. So you'll see that the shape that you're using to resist has all of this wonderful juice on it. So what happens if you just kind of let that act as a stamp? Oh, look at that line. That's beautiful. So now we can just repeat that motion if we'd like to create a different rhythm. Let's see what we've got. I'm noticing right away that I have some wonderful pooling color up here. So it's a perfect opportunity to take a Q-tip, dab into the pooling color, and create some texture. So I'm just pulling the color out of the pool here. And creating some dots with the q-tip. The other thing that's fun to do is to pull the color down, creating some some lines just by dragging the, the q-tip through the juice. Ooh, that's kind of fun. I'm going to try it down here too. Yeah, if you do something in one place on your composition, it's always fun to try it in another place in your composition as well. And what this does is it creates harmony because you have similar patterns, approaches, textures in more than one place so your eye can find them as it moves around the composition. I'm going to take another shape and a different color. So how about, let's see, I'm going to try the pomegranate juice now and then a little, little clover shape. Slightly different hue, not so different. So let's try some of the, some of the blackberry. Yeah, I like that. And then finally, a little bit of our India ink and maybe a slightly different shape Oops. I'm going to add some of this dark ink. Woo, yeah. Yeah. And then maybe a little bit down here. Actually, I'm going to flip it over and use it like a stamp. Give it a little rub. Kind of wants to stick to the paper. That's okay. Place it down again. Yeah, a little bit lighter each time. That's kind of cool. All right. So I think I'm going to just go off to the side and just spray directly on my Q-tip because I want to make some little dots like I did with the beet juice with the India ink. I'm just going to have fun with this. Yeah. And I think now I'm going to move on to a different one. I'm going to put this one off to the side to dry. So I'm just going to go back to one of the demos real quick to show you what I mean. So when we look at this one together, you can see that all of the black and white is from the ink and from using the resist of the shapes. But then the red that you see, I added that in with colored pencil. So the fun add-on for this project, you can stop right there or you can take pens, markers, crayons, colored pencils, anything you like, and go into these again after they're dry for another layer. The main thing is, is just to experiment, 
and have fun. Remember, there aren't any rules. This is just for you to play and to enjoy.